everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's make a really fun set of notepads. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Today, we are still doing our notepad notebook journal series. And today we're going to use some scraps because I did have a lot of scraps left over and we're going to make some fun little scratch pads, doodle pads, notepads, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to make the cutest little box to put them in. So if you wanted to make a gift out of your scraps, this is a really nice way to present them. I'll give you a closer look in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all. So here's a closer look at today's awesome project. It is going to be in this nice little box. And when finished, the box measures three and a half by four and a half by one. And when we open it, you can see that I used some really fun double-sided paper. And all I have on the inside are four scratch pads. Now you can decorate these if you want, but I'm keeping mine very simple because they're just basic scratch pads or doodle pads. And then when you lift up, we have our nice scratch paper or paper for doodling and the paper size measures three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So this little set here is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And we have, four of them. And I was able to use some of my scrap chipboard to make the very simple process. One that you guys have seen me do quite a bit, but this time we're going to take it and create this nice little box set of four. Here's what you're going to need to make it. So we are going to make all of these together because I want you guys to see just how quick this whole process is. So I have four sets of paper for my four scratch pads. Each set is 25 pieces of white printer paper, just plain old copier paper that measures three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So basically you're going to need to cut a hundred pieces at three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then I have four pieces of scrap chipboard that measure three and a half by four and a half. Then I have four pieces of decorative double-sided cardstock, and this measures three and a quarter by five. And then I have a nice decorative piece for the box that measures seven by nine and a half. So we're going to do this and you're going to see just how easy it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of my stacks and place them down with a piece of chipboard. This is going to be some very easy peasy crafting. So once we have it down, we're simply going to take our glue, run some glue across the top. You really don't need a thick bead of glue for this. Put that down, let it dry. I'm going to do the same thing with the others. Just adding some glue. To do our third one. All you need to do is just hold it, put your dots of glue down, and then just run your fingers to spread it, making sure that we have the paper touching that chipboard. There's pad number three. And now we'll do pad number four. And y'all, it really is as simple as what you see me doing here. I haven't sped up my video, haven't made these off camera, just made those with you guys. So I am going to move these, let them dry. And while those are drying, we're going to go ahead and make the box. So we're going to bring in that piece that measures nine and a half by seven on the nine and a half inch side. Let's score at one, at four and a half, at five and a half, and at nine. Then we're going to rotate it to the seven inch side. Let's score at one, 
rotate it to the opposite seven inch side, score at half an inch and at one and a half. And then we're just going to fold and burnish. And actually I wanted the plaid side to be my outside. That's the side on which I should have scored. This paper is not prone to cracking, so it's not really going to make a difference. So all I'm doing is folding and burnishing my scores. Then I'm going to bring in my finger blade and there's going to be a corner piece here at the bottom. We're going to remove that like that. And then we'll have two corner pieces here at the top. Let's go ahead and remove those as well. And so this flap here, this narrow flap becomes the adhesive flap. Then we're going to go along the bottom flap and we're going to free our tabs. So wherever I have a score, I am just going to make a very slight V to notch out. And so far your project piece should look like this. Now we're going to rotate it and we're going to free these tabs here at the top. So let's go ahead and just cut straight down starting at the second score mark to free the tabs. Going to go all the way across. All right, so this tab here is the adhesive flap. This is going to be the back of the flap with the flap that we'll need to fold over. So we're going to leave this one here and we're going to go to this one and let's fold it in. So I am first going to just angle in just a little bit to make sure that it's not going to hit my score marks. Now you can remove this all together if you want. I don't remove mine because I like to have that nice folded edge that's not rough or ragged. So now that we have that folded in, we're going to go ahead and reduce these tabs and then we're going to angle just a little bit. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to round this little piece here, the flap. Just going to round that top just a little bit. And so now we are ready to put our box together. I am going to be using my glue on this because my glue just happens to be out. So this is one of those projects where we don't have a lot of weight being carried. So you can actually close this box if you want it to with a high quality snail tape runner. You can definitely use your double sided tape, but all I'm doing is just joining the adhesive flap to the other side of the box to get this closure. We are simply going to use our glue to close this. So I have my glue on there. We're going to stand it up, make sure we have it nice and squared. And now we can fold that and fold in. And there we have our box. So we're going to take our box and set it to the side because now we need to finish our scratch pads. And I don't know if you can see this, but they're nice and dry. I'm not going to open them all the way because they probably do need to dry a little bit more, but they are ready for us to put them together. So all we need to do is take our toppers, lay it on top, and fold it over like that. Then I'm going to take my bone folder, go ahead and get my creases. Now I can take my glue, place my glue on the back, very close to the bottom like that. I didn't bring the glue all the way up. It's right along the quarter edge of the bottom. Fold over, 
and get that stuck. There we have a nice little pad for doodling. We're going to do the same thing with this one. So all we're doing is taking that topper and lining it up. And then we'll fold it over like this. Go over that with my bone folder. Go ahead and take my glue, run my glue along the bottom. So you guys see how great this is for your scraps. If you've been paper crafting, you have scraps. This is a great way to make your scraps work for you because whether you're giving these as a gift or you're selling them or you're keeping them, you have made something useful out of chipboard and white paper scraps. So this time I'm going to use that nice mustard color on the outside because I want two books of each pattern in my set. When you're doing a craft like this, don't overthink it. Just sit down and do it. Y'all, it is as quick as what you see me doing here. I'm not rushing. This is how I would just sit down and zip through turning my scraps into something useful. So I'm just going over that top to get that nice crease. Go ahead and add some glue. Fold that over and get that stuck. And just like that, y'all, we have four scratch pads, doodle pads, mini notebooks, whatever you want to call them. We have four of them that were made very quickly and very easily. Each one has 25 pages in it. So that means that you technically have 50 pages of writing space in each one. So you have 200 pages of writing space in this little set. So now we can take these four, bring our box back in. Put these in the box and you can see how well they fit and how beautifully coordinated they are. Let's go ahead and close this. So the last thing that I'm going to do is take a sticker and use that sticker as my decorative element on the box. The sticker is cut flat to the backing. So I am using a piece of double stick tape that I simply attach to the backing, pull it so that it will release that sticker. And now the backing is on my finger, the sticker is in my hand. And we're just going to take this and put it down. And just like my sticker says, it's all good because that is exactly what this is. It's all good. It's all beautiful. It's all useful. It is all functional. So I am going to open this, pull out my little notebooks so that you can see what we can do with our scraps. Y'all, scraps never look so good. So here is the first one along with the second one. You can dress up your little notebooks if you want. I tend to keep mine very simple because in this case, it really is all about that functionality, being able to just grab this, carry one if you need it, not have a whole lot of embellishments on the front that might get in the way and just start sketching, doodling, whatever it is you want to use these for, you now have these beautiful little books to be able to do it. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.